This video is part one of a two-part guide on using the I2C bus with an ESP8266 Node MCU and MicroPython. This is a step-by-step -step introduction, so if you have never heard of or touched I2C before, you are in the right place. In these two videos, I'll be communicating with two peripheral modules through the I2C bus, an MPU 6050 IMU and a 128 by 64 OLED display with a SSD 1306 driver. This video will go over using the I2C bus to get data from the MPU 6050. I will be going over how this is done, referencing its data sheets as needed. Part 2 will go over using the SSD 1306 display with MicroPython, using the built-in library. At the end of Part 2, I will also outline some exercises that you can try on your own. You can follow along with the written guide posted in the description of this video. If you do not have a NodeMCU flashed with MicroPython, or you do not know how to upload programs to a NodeMCU in Thani, then I recommend watching our Getting Started with MicroPython and Thani video before continuing further with this guide. I2C stands for Inter-Integrated Circuit and is a type of communications bus. Communications bus in electronics refers to a system that allows different electronics components to transfer data. The I2C bus transfers data through the use of two bidirectional lines called SDA and SCL. SDA stands for serial data, and SCL stands for serial clock. Both of these lines require pull-up resistors. This is a diagram of the setup needed to complete all of the steps in this video. We don't need to add extra resistors to pull up the I2C lines, because they are already included in the MPU6050, IMU, and SSD1306 display modules. These are the parts required for setup. A breadboard, a ESP8266 node MCU, a MPU6050 IMU module, a SSD1306 OLED display module, and some male-to-male -male jumper wires. Plug your Node MCU into the breadboard so that there is one row of breadboard pins above and below the Node MCU's pins. Next, plug your MPU6050 module into the top of the breadboard as shown. Connect the VCC pin on the MPU6050 with a 3v3 pin on the Node MCU and connect the MPU-6050's ground pin with a ground pin on the Node MCU. Next, connect D1 on the Node MCU to the SCL pin on the module, and connect D2 on the Node MCU to the SDA pin on the module. The last pin we use on the MPU-6050 module is the INT pin. Connect it to D5 on the Node MCU. Now connect the SSD-1306 OLED display into the bottom half of the breadboard. Connect the VCC and ground pins on the display to 3v3 and ground pins on the Node MCU. Lastly, connect the SCL and SDA pins on the display to the SCL and SDA lines. Since there isn't pin space above the D1 and D2 pins by the Node MCU, they can instead be connected to the SDA and SCL pins on the MPU6050 module. There are two types of devices that use the I2C bus. First are master devices, which always control the SCL line and initiate data transfers on the SDA line. The second type of devices are called slaves. Slave devices can only respond to a master device. In this setup, the ESP8266 is the master device and the MPU6050 and SSD1306 are the slave devices. It is most common that there is a single master device and many slave devices but it is possible to have multiple master devices on a single bus. However, multiple masters won't be covered in this guide. A single I2C bus using 7-bit addressing can support 128 devices with one master device and 127 slave devices. Each slave device has a unique 7-bit address, which is used by a master device to specify to which slave it wants to read from or write to. These are the addresses of the slave devices on the I2C bus in hexadecimal. Where these numbers came from will be explained very soon. In our previous guides, components were used that were simple enough to not require use of their respective data sheets. However, the components used in this guide are too complex to use without use of their data sheets. You can find links to the data sheets used in this guide in the description below this video. The MPU6050 is an IMU, which stands for Inertial Measurement Unit. It provides acceleration, gyroscope, and temperature data. Let's go through getting data off of this I2C device step-by-step step in a MicroPython REPL. Plug your ESP8266 NodeMCU into your computer and open Thani. 
Make sure that your interpreter is set up for MicroPython on an ESP8266 with the correct port. Then press the stop button at the top of Thani to get an open REPL. The simplest data to get from the IMU is the temperature data. Let's retrieve it from the IMU and then process it into degrees Celsius. The first step is importing the required libraries. From machine, import pin and I2C. Next, let's define a variable as an I2C+. I'm going to set a variable called I2C to be an I2C object with GPIO5 as the SCL pin and GPIO4 as the SDA pin. GPIO5 and 4 correspond to D1 and D2 on the Node MCU. Before we can communicate with the MPU6050 IMU, we need to know its slave device address, which we mentioned earlier. In the product specification datasheet, in the section on the I2C interface, it says that the address is 110100x, depending on the logic level of 800. We are leaving 800 alone, so its address is 1101000, which translates to 68 in hexadecimal. The addresses of the slave devices on the I2C bus can also be found through code. I2C.scan returns a list of addresses in decimal. If you enter this into the REPL, the output list should contain the decimal number 104. This translates to 68 in hexadecimal and is the address of the MPU 6050. The other number in the list is the slave address of the SSD 1306. The first thing that needs to be done before getting any data from the IMU is to make sure that it is not in sleep mode. On the register map and descriptions datasheet, we can find that sleep mode is managed through the Power Management 1 register. We can see that it has a hexadecimal memory address of 6B. To easily make sure that sleep mode is off, we can set all of the bits in this register to zero. Back in the Thani REPL, we can use the i2c.writeToMem function to write bits to a particular register in a slave device's memory. Enter i2c.writeToMem, then the first parameter is the slave device's address, which is a hexadecimal 68. In Python, hexadecimal numbers are indicated with a 0x prefix. Then the next parameter is the memory address of the register we wish to write to. We just found that the Power Management 1 register was at memory address hexadecimal 6b. Then the last parameter is the byte, or 8 bits, that we want to set the register to. This needs to be in bytes format shown here. The array inside the bytes cast are comma separated bytes represented by numbers. This could be 0 to 255 in decimal, 0x0 to 0xff in hexadecimal, or 0b0 to 0b1111111. Here I'm putting a decimal zero because it is the simplest, but I typically use hexadecimal when dealing with bytes greater than zero. Using binary is nice if you're finding it hard to visualize where the bits are in the other number bases. Hit enter to execute this I2C write. Now we are ready to actually read the temperature data from the MPU 6050. We just need to know the memory address of where the temperature is stored. Looking back at the register map, we can see that the temperature data is stored in two registers called tempoutH and tempoutL. We can see that their memory addresses are hexadecimal 41 and 42. Back in the Thani REPL, we can use the i2c.readfromMem function to read bits from a particular register in a slave device's memory. It is possible to read both the tempoutH and tempoutL registers using one call, but for the sake of clarity, I'm going to make two individual reads to get the data from each register. Let's set a variable called tempH to the result of reading data from the tempoutH register on the MPU 6050. In the REPL, the set variable tempH equal to i2c.readfromMem, with the first parameter being hexadecimal 68, the address of the slave device, the second parameter being a hexadecimal 41, the memory address of the tempout H register, and the third parameter being a 1, which is the number of bytes we want to read starting at this memory address. Then do the same for a variable called tempL, the only difference being the second parameter set to hexadecimal 42, which is the memory address of tempout L register on the MPU 6050. After the I2C reads, tempH and tempL are equal to an array of bytes containing one element. 
To get the integer value out of this array, the single element at index 0 needs to be accessed. Let's redefine tempH and tempL to be the first and only element in their respective byte arrays. If you are following along, you will probably have different data. But my tempH is equal to 249, and my tempL is equal to 144. I'll be using my tempH and tempL as an example when showing you how these two values are combined. The value from combining the tempOutH and tempOutL registers is 16 bits long with the tempOutH value as the higher and leftmost 8 bits, and the tempOutL as the lower right 8 bits. To combine them with Python, we can shift the tempH value 8 bits to the left, creating 8 zeros to the right of the original value, and then combine this number with the lower 8 bits stored in tempL. This operation of shifting binary values is called bit shifting. In Python, the left bit shift operator is two less than signs. In the REPL, let's redefine tempH to be itself bit shifted 8 to the left. Now this new bit shifted tempH is ready to be combined with tempL. Let's combine them using the bitwise or operator, which is a single bar symbol. In the REPL, create a new variable called tempData and set it to the result of performing a bitwise OR on tempH and tempL. The values read from the tempOutH and tempOutL registers have now been combined into a single value. Now this number needs to be checked to see if it is negative. The MPU 6050 IMU and many binary systems represent negative numbers through the use of a sign bit, which in the case of the MPU 6050 is the leftmost bit of the binary value in the tempout H register. If this bit is set, a two's complement needs to be performed on temp data in order to get the right temperature value. A two's complement operation consists of flipping every bit in a binary number and then adding one. Then add a negative sign to this new number you can think of this process as translating a negative number from being machine-readable to human-readable. Back in the Thani REPL, let's write an if statement to check if the leftmost bit is set. We can do this using the bitwise AND operator, which is a single ampersand. We can use this operator to compare temp data to a number with only the leftmost bit set and a total of 16 binary digits. This number can be in any base, but for the sake of clarity, I am going to use binary for now. Make sure to tab in on the line below the if statement in the REPL. If the condition is true, we want temp data to be sent to its two's complement. We can flip every bit using the bitwise exclusive or operator, which is the circumflex symbol in Python. Use this operator between temp data and a 16-bit number of all ones to flip every bit. Then make sure to add one and then add a negative sign. The last thing we need to do is convert this number to degrees Celsius. In the temperature register section on the register map and descriptions datasheet, there is a formula for converting this number to Celsius. We just need to divide this number by 340 and then add 36.53. Back in the Thani REPL, let's create a variable called tempc and set it to tempData divided by 340 and then add it to 36.53. We now finally have a temperature in Celsius. Let's write a script that gets the temperature data and prints it every 500 milliseconds. As a reminder, you can always find all of these code examples in the written guide linked in the description below the video. In the editor in Thani, start by importing I2C and PIN from the machine library. Then from time, import sleepms. Then let's define some constants at the top of the script to be the slave address and memory addresses in the MPU 6050. Then let's add two more constants to be the numbers needed to get the temperature in Celsius. Next, let's make an initialization function for the MPU 6050. In this function, we will just write to the power management one register to make sure that it is not in sleep mode. Next, let's make a function called combine register values. This is a generalized form of the steps we took to combine the high and low temperature out registers. Next, let's make a function called mpu 6050 get temp. This function will make two reads to each of the temperature out registers. Then it will call the combine register values function to 
to combine the high and low temperature data and return the converted number in Celsius. Lastly, let's write a main loop. In an if name equals main block, create an I squared C object using the SDA and SEL pins. Then call the MPU6050 init function. Then in an infinite loop, print the result of MPU6050 get temp followed by a 500 millisecond sleep. Save this script to your node MCU as main.py and then press the reset button on the node MCU to run it. As you can see, we are now getting temperature readings every 500 milliseconds in Celsius. If you want to have an understanding at the signal level of how I2C communications works, make sure to check out the I2C bus protocol section of the written guide where I break down how communication works bit by bit and even translate the exact I2C Python commands we made to get the temperature data to signals on the SDA and SCL lines. This guide is linked in the description below this video. Now, let's get the data from the accelerometer and gyroscope on the MPU6050. This process is very similar to getting the temperature data. First, on the datasheet, let's find out at what memory address the accelerometer and gyroscope data is stored. There are high and low values for each of the three axes of the accelerometer and gyroscope. These six registers for the accelerometer are from hexadecimals 3b to 40 and 43 to 48 for the gyroscope. If we go to the individual accelerometer section, we can see that there is a table for setting the sensitivity of the accelerometer. The sensitivity is set by the AFS cell bits in another register called Excel config. By default, AFS cell is set to zero. So the table says that the range is plus or minus two gravitational forces. Additionally, the table says that the LSB sensitivity is 16,384 LSBs per G. This stands for at least significant bits per gravitational force. This means that once we combine the register values, we just need to divide that number by 16,384 to get the force in Gs. If we go to the gyroscope section, we can see that there's a similar table with bits called FS cell, which is also set to zero by default in the gyro config register. According to the table, this means that the range is plus or minus 250 degrees per second, and the sensitivity is 131 LSBs per degree per second. This means that we need to divide the combined data by 131 to get the measurement in degrees per second. Let's change the main.py script to get the accelerometer and gyroscope data from the MPU6050. The full code can be found in the written guide. Leave the imports as is, but change the register values to match up with the memory addresses of each of the accelerometer and gyroscope data registers on the MPU6050. Then add constants to reflect the sensitivity values from the table. Then leave the MPU6050 init function and combine register values function as is. Next, make an MPU6050 get Excel function to get the accelerometer data. Return data for the three axes as a list. Make sure to divide each axis value by the constant MPU6050 LSBG, which we defined at the beginning of the script. This value is the LSB per G value from the sensitivity table. Then make a function to get the gyroscope data called MPU6050 get gyro. Here I forgot to change the sensitivity value that I was dividing by from MPU6050 LSBG to MPU6050 LSBDS which is the least significant bits per degree per second from the table on the datasheet. I will come back at the end and fix this. Lastly, in the if name equals main block, change the infinite loop to print the accelerometer and gyroscope data, along with the temperature data and a 500 millisecond delay. Here I fix the gyroscope function by dividing each axis by MPU6050 LSBDS. When you are finished, make sure to stop any scripts that are running by pressing the stop button at the top of Thani. Then save the script to the node MCU and press the reset button to run it. Now the temperature, accelerometer, and gyroscope data is being printed every 500 milliseconds. You can move the breadboard around to test it, but it can be difficult to see the accelerometer and gyroscope values change in real time. Before this part of the I2C guide is over, I want to demonstrate use of the int pin on the MPU6050 module. At the beginning of this guide, in the setup section, we connected this pin to GPIO14 on the node MCU, 
which is labeled as D5. The int pin sends a signal when a configurable condition is met. Let's configure the MPU6050 to send an interrupt signal when there is new data that is ready to be read. According to the register map and descriptions datasheet, the int enable register is at memory address hexadecimal 38, and bit 0 needs to be enabled in this register to get an interrupt signal when data is ready. In the Thani editor, add a constant to be the memory address of the int enable register. Then add a line to the MPU6050 init function to set bit 0 in the int enable register. Then add a print data function to print the data. This will be the handler for the interrupt. Then in the if name equals main block, delete the while loop and add a pin definition for GPIO 14. Set it as an input with a pull-up resistor. Then add an IRQ to this pin on a falling edge with the handler set to the print data function, which was defined above. Make sure to stop any previous scripts if they are still running and then save this new script to your ESP8266. Then press the reset button to run it. You will now see that the data is coming in really fast. This is because it is trying to get and print the newest data as soon as it is notified that it is ready via the int pin. If you try to stop the script like I do here, you will likely have issues like I do. If this happens to you, simply unplug the jumper connecting int to GPIO 14 from one of the pins. Then press the stop button again. This concludes part one of this I2C guide. Stay tuned for part two coming soon. If you want to check out more of our guides, head on over to micronote.tech, where we have write-ups that go along with our videos on YouTube. We also just released our first product called the Atlas Kit, which is available now in our Etsy store and ships to the US and Canada. This kit comes with a Node MCU and all of the requisite parts to be soldered into the expansion board that the Node MCU fits into. This kit is our beginner's platform for getting started with electronics and programming. In the future, we will be posting guides and project ideas for the Atlas kit, along with our usual Node MCU guides to our website and YouTube channel. Thank you for watching.